My story, his call. One call, many great stories. What have you been through? What have you survived? My story, his call with God's servant, Eric Obeng is a program designed to encourage servants of God in the ministry. Guests tell their life experiences from childhood to the point where God called them into the ministry, the challenges and oppositions they face. Ministry is not for lazy people. I wanted to be a medical doctor. And I'm glad my mom didn't abort me. But in all of it, we're more than conquerors. I felt, um, I felt this, this if, I, if I quit it, I didn't know how I was really gonna survive and how far the Lord by His grace has brought them. There's a difference between church and being born again. So if God didn't send you there, you sent yourself, and then you're going to have a hell of a time, you know, being in that ministry. Mistakes are made, and then how you choose your leadership. You really, really take your time and pray and be very convinced. Praying for them to be healed, and God worked miracles. Mm. The enemy is smart, and I always say that he will get you at your most vulnerable. Mm. It takes the power of God. My Story, His Call is broadcast live on Facebook, YouTube, and the Word and Spirit Network Radio with your host, God's servant, Eric Obey. Follow and subscribe for life-changing encounters. This is time that we want to be encouraged. This is time that we want to have fellowship in the law my story his call one call many great stories My story, his call. One call, many great stories. Wow, my story, his call. One call, many great stories. What have you been through? What have you survived? What are the challenges and the difficulties that you are going through so far as life and ministry is concerned? With me in the virtual studios is another father another servant of god another worker in the vineyard and he is in the person of reverend daniel okokun all the way in ghana and we are here to have a fellowship that's how i call it so what can you do just take your device uh, take your notebooks and please share 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 let us invite people and i believe that once life will never be uh, the same so let me go ahead and engage daddy and uh, just put things in perspective. Uh, Reverend, you are welcome. Thank you. Wow. The management team of my story has called and said, big thank you for availing yourself today to be a blessing to us. In fact, we don't take this lightly at all. And I believe God has a purpose for us today. We want to begin by first knowing who Reverend Daniel is. Walk us through the genesis of your life. How did life begin? How did it start? Where were you born? We are ready. Go ahead, please. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Once again, good, uh, good afternoon, Ghana time, and good morning, U.S. time. 
uh, I really thank God for making this day for us so we can show forth uh, the glory of Jesus Christ. I thank God for giving me space to share on your global platform, mm -hmm. captioned word and spirit. Oh, God bless you. God's servant, Apostle Eric Obey. I really congratulate you and the family for the good and great work that you are doing to bless humanity. Yeah. And the impact is so great. And I really thank God. I pray the spirit of God will stretch your influence mm. to many more nations, even, in, even to the uttermost parts of the world. It's the good work that you are doing. Be strengthened and be encouraged. The Spirit Amen. of God uh, is your helper. Amen. And I really thank God for the name of your network, Amen. Word and Spirit. It speaks of you and what Amen. you represent. So Amen. keep focusing on the Word and the Spirit. That is all what Amen. Christianity is about. That is all, all what the Kingdom of God is about. And once again, I want to thank the Lord for using my brother, Dr. Pius Kofi Yanzu, uh, who connected me to you. And so amazing. I thank Dr. Pius Kofi Yanzu for connecting me to you and your ministry, your global ministry. Uh, I taught him geography so many years ago at the secondary school in Ghana. Wow. And many years later, the amazing thing is that we all attended uh, the same uh, Bible school that was many years after. And um, was a year ahead of him. And by God's grace, uh, he really knows me and knows what God uh, has for me. And so uh, he lovingly connected me to you. And so I'm thankful to God about that. So God bless you as a form of salutation. I want to say God bless you, God keep you, God protect you and preserve you, your life and your career, and your destiny in Jesus Christ. And together, we do this thing for Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. amen. Now, walk us through the genesis of your life. Where were you born? <laughs> well, I was born at a little village in Ghana, West Africa. And... I thank God that now the village is developed uh, to become a town. And uh, that's about 66 years ago I was born by the grace of God in that tiny village. Uh, early childhood life, you know, wasn't the best. My father and my mother, they were illiterate, complete illiterate. They never attended school. And all of us, we were, you know, uh, caught up in, in this village. So he used us on his farm, we, you know, as laborers, and at the same time we attended school. And my mom and my dad, you know, had uh, nine, uh, nine issues uh, since I've left for glory. We are left for, we are left to three now. But my father had uh, other, you know, children. And in all, I don't know, about 24 or something, yeah, children. And I thank God for my dad and my mom. My dad has gone to glory. Uh, my mom is still alive, uh, kicking about 96 or 97 years. Wow. Old. Yeah, that tells you how my God has loved us. And I thank God that they took care of us. They did their best. And uh, to take us to school. Uh, growing up as a child, mm -hmm. growing up as a child, I used to learn, uh, like airplanes, trains, refrigerators, TV, you know, uh, these stuff that are normally found in the cities in those days. And I was wondering where in the world can we find these Planes, airplanes and trains and TV and whatever, whatever that I'm reading from textbooks. That mm. was all our world, that little village. I had no uncle, I had no uncle, I had no relative in any of the nearest district, you know, uh, capital towns, you know, the original uh, capital towns. Yeah, mm. so I was always daydreaming, daydreaming, daydreaming. 
And one day, one day at age 22, one day, Jesus literally walked into that village. Mm. Literally. Mm. And of all the 24 children, he picked me. Mm. I don't know why he picked me. I don't know why he loved me. Oh, Jesus. And it all, it all occurred when there was a retreat uh, in my little church down there, Christ Apostolic Church, precisely. Okay. The pastor was having a retreat. Uh, it was one Saturday, and I struggled to go, to attend to that meeting. And when I went, the pastor preached about hell. Mm. Hell. And he passionately did it, taught it. Mm. And I believe the Holy Spirit at that time, you know, uh, was about to do something with my life. Okay. I wept uncontrollably to disturb the whole church. Wow. I felt something had entered into me. I didn't know what was happening to me in that little village, in that little church. Mm. But I felt an incredible peace. So sweet. And there was a sound of joy within me. And I couldn't find words to explain it. Okay. I didn't know what was happening to me. But my pastor knew that something had entered into me. That's right. Well, asked me, what is happening to me? He said, you have had an encounter with Jesus. Mm. I said, what does that one mean? It means what? He said, I don't know it all, but all I know is that the hand of God has touched you. Okay. And so he got close to me and also got close to him. He started to unfold scripture unto me. Okay. Talking more about the crucified Christ. Okay. And I thank the Lord that I met the right pastor hmm. who taught me what redemptive work of Jesus Christ is. And from that point, from that point, my heart began to seek for God. I love the Lord. I was staying at the mission house. I finished doing my my work in my my home and then I would run to his uh, I ran to the mission house, sit down there, listen to him, help him, do all kinds of things and then I'll be listening to him. So he started, you know, teaching me who Jesus is, who the Holy Ghost is, and opening me to scripture. And I was hungry. I was hungry to learn more of Jesus. So strangely, in that village, I had a strong desire to love the Lord and his word. But not too long ago, Reverend Apostle, a Pastor Michael Nemo was transferred. Then another pastor came. Okay. Pastor Atadaku, he really groomed me for a very long time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. He came to continue what uh, Pastor Michael Nimo did. So wonderful. Then my my whole life was uh, was like an eagle among chicken. I was in a different environment. Uh, it, it was like I, I, I was a stranger in my own home. Mm. I was a stranger in my own church. Mm. So I was thinking, now Lord, what next? This village, middle school living certificate. Uh, immediately the spirit of God began to illuminate my mind. Okay. Past my you know, all my examinations that, you know, uh, we, we used to call it middle school living certificate. Did what we call common entrance examination and then they passed. Went to the nearest secondary school to my hometown. My father said he wouldn't take me to a far place. So just uh, 
the closest secondary school I went there. And I thank God, actually, in your secondary school. And the Lord illuminated my mind. I wasn't doing, no, I wasn't doing good. I wasn't doing well. Uh, went back to do the old stuff. Somewhere along the line, you know, at, at, at the, the secondary school life began to, you know, bother me. And after secondary school, the Lord revisited me, opened my heart. And from that point, the Spirit of God had to do great work in my life. I passed my secondary school examinations. I passed my secondary school examinations with grade one. Then went to six form, same school. My father wouldn't want me to go to any other you know, school. He wanted me to be very close to him because he didn't know what you know, the staff is. Six form, by God's grace, I passed and went to University of Cape Coast to become the first child of my father's generation, my grandfather, grandmother, great-grandmother, great-grandfather generations back. And I became the first person to enter the university. Wow. And I knew that now the land, it was all Jesus. Wow. There is something about Jesus I'll talk to you later on mm -hmm. when you have an encounter with him, a real encounter with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So I went to the University of Cape Coast so amazing when i went to the university of cape coast first year first year and from my village to cape coast is a very long distance and it took the grace of god for me to find my way from that village to the university of cape coast i'm telling you the truth wow i am telling you the truth mm. there is a bigger community university a village boy mm. still hungry for god so I realized that we had what we call a Pentecostal fellowship at the university. So I joined, first year student. Amazingly, from the village, I was unanimously voted as the prayer secretary of mm. the whole university, Pentecostals and charismatic churches. Second year I was voted again as the prayer secretary third year i was voted a president of the whole university pentecostal fellowship third year same third year we had what we call university christian fellowship where we had uh pentecostals charismatics where the methodists the anglicans the presbyterians and you know all other churches you know, also forming one, uh, one uh, group. That's right. I was the prayer secretary. So when I was the president for the Pentecostals Fellowship, I was also the prayer secretary for all the religious bodies on campus. Wow. Yes. So the Lord wow. was growing in me. Hmm. Even though my external environment, you know, was... Uh, was nothing to you know uh, you know to be admired but I thank God for the Holy Spirit who was at work in me Amen. I was experiencing the amazing grace mm. many times I have to feel something like a blanket a, 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 a blanket of love wrapped within me Mm. So many feelings within me. Love. Sometimes it's like somebody pouring forth water, oil within me. Mm. And I knew that the Lord had, you know, has something great for me to do. Wow. So growing up at UCC, University of Cape Coast, at our time, the first ever campus crusade was done when I was the president of the Pentecostal Fellowship. The first ever campus 
crusade, open air crusade. And I thank God that our speaker was uh, Reverend Dr. Mensa Utaber, one of okay. the most revered ministers in Ghana as I'm talking to you now. That was somewhere mm. 1984, 1985. Wow. And I can still remember the message he preached, whosoever will. Oh, we had gathered all our musical instruments. We were there, you know, uh, and amazingly, when he came to minister, the power of God began to rule in the lives of so many people. Many of the university students gave their lives to Christ. When I entered first year Pentecost, when I entered first year university, Pentecostal Fellowship, our enrollment was about 21. When I was leaving, we were about 105. By the grace of God. So Pentecostalism, Pentecostalism and charismatism, the spirit and the fire, the power, the glory of it. Mm -hmm. I want to say that by the grace and mercy of God, I'm one of the people that the Lord used mm -hmm. to bring others together to promote charismatism, Pentecostalism. I thank God for, for those who earlier on set up the pace for us to also uh, continue. Wow. We'll come to that, uh, Reverend. Let me acknowledge some people watching with us. Then we'll now cross the eyes. Uh, we'll cross the T's and dot the eyes to follow vividly what you are telling us. I see this is coming from Sally. Sally Opokubwama says that. Thank you, Daddy. Sally, please share. Let us know where you are watching us from. Nunakwame. It says that the story we need to appreciate the glory uh, not to fail as young followers. Daddy, thank you. Then Elizabeth, Elizabeth Quarkus is a powerful, great ace is mercy towards you. Jet Allen says that I'm encouraged and inspired. And then uh, Jet Allen again said, inspirational, thank you. Then Sally again says that this is really a real encounter with Jesus. Please share, share, share. Let us invite friends and loved ones. This is how we share. Alan had done justice to it. You know, you type the name of the people in the comment section, begin the notification, and they join us. I want everybody to share, please. Comment. If you have any question, let us know, and Daddy will address it. What a powerful introductory to, uh, to Reverend uh, Daniel. So, Reverend, you've been a father. You've been around from the genesis of your story even to the extent that you were one of the pioneers, I mean, on campus to have probably I mean, have an opening crusade. What amazing, you know, vessel that God used, you know, to spread the gospel. Now, looking at ministry in your days, ministry today, what would you say has changed and what has been the difference? Ministry then your days, the fire and the zeal and what we are seeing today as a father. Thank you very much. Once again, Apostle Eric Corbin, God bless you for what you are doing. God bless your family. I really understood the call of God when I was on campus. And I see ministry. Some people see ministry as work. Of course, I also see it as work. Mm. But I see ministry as a person. Mm. And it's Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. If you ask me what is ministry, I will tell you ministry is a person. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. Wow. And I have scripture to back it. Okay. John chapter 6. John chapter 6. Mm -hmm. John chapter 6. Jesus had fed a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And some of them went and asked him, what shall we do or what can we do to do the works of God? Mm -hmm. Oh, they were hungry because Jesus was working miracles for them. They were getting food to eat. So they were thinking of how can we also work to get food to eat? And Jesus okay. said in Luke chapter 6, verse number 28 and 29. So interesting. John so chapter interesting. 6, right? Yes. John 6, 28 and 29. Okay. Yes. Then said they unto him, What shall we do that we might work the works of God? Mm -hmm. 
Jesus answered and said unto them, This is the work of God, that ye believe on him who he has sent. Wow. So ministry is a person. Not until we understand it this way, we can do ministry properly. Wow. Ministry is a person. Wow. That has been my revelation. And I want to thank God for the Holy Spirit revealing this to me. Jesus wow. is more important to me than what I do. Okay. And of course, what I do has bearing with him. That's if right. you should take away Jesus from, from our lives, we, we have no ministry with him. That's right. We have no ministry with him. Mm. And so mm. Jesus mm. is, is, is a, uh, Jesus is the ministry. Jesus is the work. Mm. What do we mm. do? We are working Jesus. It is Jesus that we are working. If we understand mm. it this way, then we have revelation of who Jesus is. The Spirit of God reveals the Jesus who was walking at the shores of Capernaum, going to Jerusalem, going to Tyre and Sidon, Jesus moving here and there, that walking Jesus, the Spirit of God begins to reveal him to us. Okay. That is what we mean by revelation of him. Okay. Revelation of him. And that is where we begin to get his spirit of wisdom. When we have a revelation of him and we have his wisdom, ministry yeah. becomes his. Ministry becomes his, not ours. Okay. That means that we have what we call living faith. We walk in living faith. Not religious faith. Many are Many have religious faith. Religious faith has to do with, you know, doing what is convenient to you. Religious faith has to do with just reading the Bible just to preach to people, but not you being impacted upon. Religious faith okay. makes you look for what is in the ministry more than what Jesus wants you to do in ministry. You do your okay. own things. Okay. Religious faith denies holiness in our private lives. That's religious faith. Mm -hmm. It's not by excellency of speech without walking in the will of God. It's not by motivational speeches and doing what you like. People must not see us by our public ministry well, if that is the case, so be it. But God sees us as we relate to him in, in private. Okay. So growing up, and all this time, growing up is all about Jesus. And I will never forget when I received Jesus as Savior and Lord for the first time. Die in my village. I had to work and get the money and travel to our regional capital to see our regional apostle to ask him to ask him some questions as a young man growing up. Okay. If he was a regional apostle, an elderly man. I went to Sinyane, went to his home, asked him, Daddy, I've come to you. I've come to greet you. I've come to see how you are faring. And I have a question to ask you. How would you advise a young man who loves the Lord and is growing up? This elderly man looked at my face and said, repeat your question. I repeated it. He shook his head and told me three things. Okay. I will never forget him. Mm. Number one, he told me this. 
be careful with the love for money as a child of God and in ministry. Number two, this elderly man told me, be careful of the opposite sex. Okay. This elderly man told me, be careful of vain glory. Be at yourself. Wow. Mm. It has been 44 years down the line. And these scenes every day remind me of who I am in Christ and who I represent. Okay. So I learned from pastors. Okay. So if you look, at, so question. if you look at, if you look at ministry today, then that of what you guys experience. Let's say. The up and coming ministers today and your days. What is the difference now? Is it because the ministers of today are more into the three things opposite than what you were told? What is the difference? Apostle Eric, I can say that it takes mm. a revelation of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. It takes the wisdom of Jesus Christ at work in a man. Mm. That makes all the difference. That makes all the difference. Attending the Bible school doesn't make you a man of God. Mm. Attending a seminary is good. Bible school is good. Mm. But that doesn't make you a man of God. Mm. It doesn't make you a man of God. What makes a person a man of God is when his heart catches a revelation of Jesus Christ. Jesus becomes his personal life and okay. never okay. wants to treat it for anything. So I want mm. to believe that maybe uh, we are all learning. Mm. We are all learning. Mm. Ministry is not for filthy lacquer. Popularity. Okay. Motivation, mm. numbers, mm. Mm. even though they are mm. all good, but that's not ministry. That's not what ministry is. Ministry is reproducing ourselves in people. And what is our stuff? What is our stuff? Mm. We give what we have. We reproduce what we have. If we genuinely know who Jesus is mm -hmm. and what he has saved us for mm -hmm. and where we are going, mm -hmm. if these things can influence our lives, mm -hmm. then we can know how to also inform others who are following us. That's right. Wow. 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 Family, if you just join us, this is my story. His call. And with me in the virtual studios is Reverend Daniel Okoko all the way in Ghana. We are having a powerful discussion here. Uh, Reverend is breaking things down to us. And you could tell that the central focus of all that he's telling us is centered on Jesus. Listen, without Jesus, we are nothing. If you want to do ministry and do it well, Paul, I'm sorry, Peter said, Jesus Christ is our model. Look up to him model after him and your life and your ministry will never be the same we see this coming from elizabeth elizabeth again says that wow very deep and powerful elizabeth let us know where you're watching us from the nakwami do the same let us know where you're watching us from then Nakwame says that be careful of the love of money be careful of the opposite sex be careful of vain glory this powerful things listen if you didn't hear anything at all these three things is very loud, very loud. A young minister, a young Christian, if you want to go well, you want to do well in ministry, be mindful of these three things. Be careful for the love of money. Be careful of the opposite sex. And be careful for vain glory. This is from a father who has seen it all, who has done it all. Now, brother, let me come back to you. Now, by the grace of God, 
you had opportunity to have people who mentored you. You had a zeal for the work of the ministry. You want to go far in the work that God has called you as well as being a Christian. Now, tell us, at what point finally in your life did you realize that going to school and doing all this, this now I can sense the call of God upon my life so strong. Therefore, let me get into full-time ministry and do it and do it well. At what point? That was 28 years ago. Wow. What happened? 28 years ago. Hmm. I came out from the university as, as a trained teacher, a graduate a trained teacher in geography, economics, and sociology. Mm. I, taught at a, I taught at a secondary school. Okay. And I was working with Ghana Rubber Estates okay. as the assistant marketing manager at, at their head office. Mm. A very reputable organization. Mm. One day I sat by my desk. Mm. Very nice office. Took a pen. And resigned. I could look back from my village Jeez. to secondary school to university. Mm. What the Lord has been doing, I said, No, 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 no. Lord, I want to give the rest of my life to you. I want Jeez. to invest my life to you. I was paid well, it was a good company, good mm -hmm. office. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, I okay. Marketing manager. Mm. I said, Lord, it's good. This work is good, but I want to give my life to you. That was where I resigned. And when I resigned, that was October 12, 1995. The Lord supernaturally led me to go to Tulsa, Oklahoma, to go and meet Papa Kenneth Hagen. He was the first pastor. I had an encounter with October 28th. I left the company October 15th. Mm. October 28th, I was in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Wow. To sit under his feet and ask him some questions again. Wow. When I left his conference at Broken Arrow in Tulsa, Oklahoma, came back to Ghana, I wrote him a personal letter because I took a picture with him. Okay. And I have his picture at my office right now. My picture with him. Wow. I wrote him a letter and said, Papa, by this picture, you can identify with me. I was at your conference. That's that was right. World Pastors Conference. That's so right. powerful. Hmm. I said, how would you advise hmm. a young man who has now resign his work to become a full-time pastor. Wow. <laughs> wow. Tell us. Papa Hagen took a pen. Mm. He didn't type it. He took a mm. pen and then said, serve the Lord with gladness. Jesus. Follow the word and the spirit. Let that be enough for you. This one to I learned it from Papa Hagen. Serve the Lord with gladness. Follow his word and his spirit. Mm. And it shall be well with you. Wow. Since that time, amazing doors, amazing doors, amazing doors. I've, I've been coming to your country. I've been there up and down, up and down 24 times. Wow. I've been to both of your states preaching to people. White people, black people, by God's grace. Most of my mission activities take place, you know, uh, with white people. By the grace and mercy of God. Because of what Papa said to you. I've been to Israel, Cameroon, Nigeria, and that's amazing. Because of what Papa said to you. That's right. That's right. He told me, save the Lord. With gladness and follow them. Yes. Wow. Wow. So the young, the young ones coming, they should ask questions. Hmm. They 
they shouldn't take advice from their colleagues, their peer people. What do they know? What have they gone through? Hmm. Okay. What do okay. they know? Hmm. They should find people with long-standing proven character and ministry and ask them sensitive questions. Wow. And may they never forget those questions and the answers that they that they receive. Wow. That is me. That is me. Mm. That is me. Mm. So please, younger ones coming, we are still learning. We haven't achieved it yet. Mm. Not until the Lord calls us home. That's we are right. not done yet. That's right. That's right. Mm. Ask us questions. Not questions that will make you popular. Make you rich. Mm. You are not in a competition with anybody. I am not in a competition with any minister in this world. That's right. That's right. That's right. I do what he gives me grace to do. That's I know right. my lane. Mm. 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 By God's grace, I have two people joining me to heaven. I, I will be congratulated. That's right. Wow. 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 I think that is... Uh, uh, camera has frozen. Network is frozen. So we'll, we'll, we'll get him back again. But this is wisdom unfolding. And Justice says, watch it from Cape Coast, Ghana. Then uh, Justice again says that, mm, God help us. Then uh, Alan again says that, serve the Lord with gladness. This is deep. Then this is coming from Sally. Sally again says that, that's right. Until the Lord calls us home, we are not yet done. Yes, Reverend. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are alive. I can hear you. Yeah, you're okay. Don't worry about it. Yeah, you're you are, you are, yeah, you are back again. I was just re-echoing all that you are saying. In fact, we are taking home two bulletins today. If you're a young minister, if you're a young Christian, if you want to do well in life and in ministry, the advice that was given to Reverend Daniel is one, stay away from money. Two, stay away from the opposite sex. Three, avoid vain glory. Three things. Then Reverend, after resigning, from his civil work straight away went to meet papa hagan and he sat under the feet of papa hagan and asked papa hagan a question a young man who had resigned and wants to serve the lord what should i do my goodness papa hagan said serve the lord with gladness follow the word in spirit oh jesus Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I don't know how you understand this words. I don't know how you see this words. But this is coming from a grandfather to a father. Now, a father in the person of Reverend Daniel is telling sons and daughters who have gathered today, what are you taking home? Sally says, great advice. Indeed, this is wisdom unfolding. Reverend, you are back again. You were advising us as ministers, as believers, watching you today, a wisdom from a father unto us. What again do we need to know? You said the ministers of today are in a hurry. We don't want to ask questions. What we want to see is vain glory. Tell us, speak to us. Go ahead. It's amazing. I come back to the same point. If you have a, if your heart has an encounter with truth, what is truth? Truth is one. Jesus Christ is truth. A person. 
then you begin to appreciate his redemptive work. Okay. Listen. Apart from having a revelation of Jesus Christ, what does it mean to have a revelation of Jesus Christ? It is the spirit who reveals Jesus to your heart. Mm. Your mind can figure out Jesus. Mm. Your mind, your intellect cannot figure out Jesus. It is the spirit mm. that reveals Jesus to us. And when the spirit reveals Jesus to us, he goes ahead to do another revelation. He reveals who man is, what man is. When we have a revelation of man, our attitude will change in ministry. We have compassion, we have mercy. We begin to walk in love. Because man, man, man by nature is corrupt, selfish, depraved. He loves to hit. He loves to strife. He's impatient. He's ingratitude. He's ungrateful. He's arrogant. He's indisciplined. Having revelation of Jesus Christ makes you also have revelation of man. That makes you find out how you can now work out Jesus into man's life and be patient with man even when they curse you. Mm. When they despitefully use you. Mm. When they neglect you. When they don't appreciate you. Hmm. That is a man. Wow. That is a man. So you don't fight him. You, you love him. <coughs> you don't hate him. You love him. You become patient with him. You continue to show gratitude to him when he pays you back with wickedness. Hmm. Hmm. You become gentle. Face to face with arrogance. Why? So you can, by the grace of God, use scripture. Because that such was that was how we were, and Jesus came to die for us. If we don't have revelation of man, we will cheat them. Hmm. We didn't even know that they live in, you know, a uh, 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 in such horrible situations. Wow. So, young men come in. Please, we are working with human beings. Mm. Man by nature. Man by nature is unfaithful. Man by nature is corrupt. Mm. Depraved. Arrogant. That's the nature of man. And these are the people that we have been called and sent to, like sheep in a midst of wolves. We don't hate them. We don't curse them. But that is man. What is ministry? What is ministry? Ministry is sending Jesus to the corrupt man. What is ministry? Ministry is sending life to the lifeless. What is ministry? Ministry is being patient and kind to intercede for them that even despitefully use you. We can only do this when our hearts are circumcised. When vain glory is not the agenda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love for man is not the agenda. Mm -hmm. The opposite is not the agenda. Mm -hmm. That we can do this kind of thing. Wow, 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 wow. 
Wow, if you just join us, this is my story, his call. And with me in the virtual studios is another servant of God. You can tell that Bishop has the work of ministry at heart, the way he sees it with passion and everything. We want to go for a quick break. When we come back, we'll continue to engage uh, Reverend Daniel for some few questions, then we'll wrap up. Stay tuned. Don't go anyway. What have you been through? What have you survived? My story, his call with God's servant, Eric Obeng is a program designed to encourage servants of God in the ministry. Guests tell their life experiences from childhood to the point where God called them into the ministry, the challenges and oppositions they face. Ministry is not for lazy people. I wanted to be a medical doctor and I'm glad my mom didn't abort me. I but in all of it, we're more than conquerors. I felt, um, I felt this, this if I if I quit, I didn't know how I was really going to survive. And how far the Lord, by His grace, has brought them. There's a difference between church and being born again. So if God didn't send you there, you sent yourself, and then you're going to have a hell of a time, you know, being in that ministry. Mistakes are made, and then how you choose your leadership really really take your time and pray and be very convinced praying for them to be healed and god worked miracles mm. the enemy is smart and i always say that he will get you at your most vulnerable mm. it takes the power of god my story his call is broadcast live on facebook youtube and the word and spirit network radio with your host god's servant Eric Obeng. Follow and subscribe for life-changing encounters. This is time that we want to be encouraged. This is time that we want to have fellowship in the Lord. My story, his call. One call, many great stories. many great stories what have you been through what have you survived what are the challenges and difficulties that you are going through so far as life and ministry is concerned with me in the virtual studios today is another servant of god you've had a lot you could tell this man's passion is centered on christ listen here's the reason why you and i are here today without him we are nothing Ministry without Christ is meaningless. Who are you projecting? Who are you leading? Who are you guiding? If your center is not based on him, then reverse it and go back to the drawing board. Hallelujah. I see this is coming from um, uh, Emma. says that hidden truth in there. Then... Jet Allen said that vain glory is not the agenda. Love for money is not the agenda. I am learning. Wow. That is coming from an aquam. He says that have a personal uh, revelation of Jesus Christ for yourself as a minister of God. Those who also help you have a relationship of man. That is so powerful and that is great. Now, Reverend, back to you again. Yeah. Now, as a father, you've been around. What are the challenges in ministry? If you want to advise us, what should we be mindful of? The first ministry is concerned. Challenges in ministry. And give us experience that you 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 I mean you went through. I know, I mean, leaving your your secular job, well-paid job, and coming into full-time ministry wasn't easy to begin with you know <laughs> now you're coming to start look at the challenges that probably you might go through your father will call you hey I, to I took you to school to go and learn and you know better yourself and come and take care of us now you've quit that and you want to go into ministry challenges in ministry help us thank you very much apostle once again god bless you for your life and uh, ministry reaching out to the whole world. Before I answer, you know, I, I answer your... Uh, can you hear me? I can hear you very good. Yes, yes go ahead. Because this is the, oh, you can see clear. This is the picture I had with uh, 
Papa Higgin and his wife at my office. Oh, wow, that's beautiful. Yes, in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yes, I Family, I had with, uh, can you see that? I had with a uh, Rehan Banker, Bonky, I had an encounter oh, wow. with him. Yes, mm. the, the German evangelist wow. who also yes. prayed for me. This wow. is the daughter of uh, T.L. Osborne. Mm. Ladun, T.L. Osborne. Wow. I had an encounter with her. Wow. This is T.L. Osborne himself. I had an encounter with him. Wow. All in the United States. Yes. I had an encounter with uh, the daughter of uh, Martin Luther King, Benis, Reverend Benis. Wow. These are all people I've asked them questions before hmm. about what is life? Who is Jesus? And what are we after? See, wow. just to let the young people listening, watching, to know that it is good to, 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 to uh, to get to the feet of proven ministers of God who have stood the test of time. Sit under their feet and ask them questions. Because ministry is handing over baton to the next That's generation. Right. That's right. And we must That's listen right. to hold the baton very well. Mm. Otherwise, a generation is coming that will miss what Christianity is. Mercy. Wow. A generation coming that will miss mm. what the kingdom is. Mm. Well, we bless God for all these things. And to Him alone be all the glory. If you have heard of uh, Nasser Siddiqui, this Muslim who was about to die and had an encounter with Jesus in his bedroom in Tulsa, Oklahoma, at the hospital. Wow. His ministries, many ministries. Yes, this is Nasil Siddiqui. Wow. I also asked him questions. Hmm. And he, I remember he told me this. It's all about Jesus. Wow. Anyway. All right, you are asking me of my challenges. Challenges in ministry yes. as a father. Yes. Ministry is not for boys. Mm. <laughs> That's a wild statement. <laughs> wow. Ministry is not for the immature. Mm. Ministry is not for those who have not had any encounter with Jesus. You must have a private ministry with Jesus before you must have a public ministry with the people. Wow, that's deep. If you don't have any private ministry with Jesus, you have no business talking to people. You are only just warming them on the pews and taking their monies. Their hearts mm. are not cut. Mm. They go back home. They say, Ministry is not easy. You must be prepared for people to pay you with evil. Mercy. Mercy. After you have done them much, 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 much good. Wow. You must make that provision in ministry. Tell us. You must make that provision in ministry. The people that God will use you to raise them up, bless them, some of them will reward you with evil. But you must still love them. Wow. It is God who puts one here and puts one there. Hmm. But many times you realize that ah, this thing, it should have been so. But it happens. What do you do? You see, the thing is that your focus is on heaven. Okay. 
your focus is a walk you take with Jesus one day at a time. A journey towards the celestial city of the Almighty God. And along this journey, you are inviting people. You are calling people to join. Okay. You are counseling them. You are praying for them. That's right. If they don't want to be counseled, helped, you keep going. Mm. <laughs> wow. You keep going. It's like running a bus from one city to another city. Some people board okay. a bus, some drop along the way. Some will take the bus. Oh, I've been taking Greyhound bus. When I come to US, I take Greyhound bus a, a lot. Mm. Greyhound bus. Mm. Some people board. Another station, some people get down. That's right. Another place, some people board. Mm. That, that ministries. You make provision for all this. So that they don't break your heart. You don't call the gospel. Yeah, you don't right. mention mm -hmm. the gospel. That's right. That's right. When mm -hmm. Jesus was betrayed and denied, he kept going. His mission mm. was to die on the cross. Okay. okay. That is a assignment. Okay. So he said, he who believes. He who believes. Mm. He who believes. Somebody not believing doesn't stop you from going to where God wants you to go. Okay. Somebody not appreciating you doesn't stop you from what God wants you to do. That's right. Your focus. That's right. Is defined. Your pathway mm. is defined. Mm. You are only trying okay. to throw a helping hand to people. Mm. As we, we we have to be very strong. There are challenges. That's right. So many challenges are in, in ministry. But we need to keep focus. Misrepresentation, misinterpretation, misinformation, and all kinds of things. These are normal military exercises in the ministry. We should expect them. Okay. Okay. Wow. We should expect wow. that. So there are challenges. Financial challenges. Okay. Sometimes people that you think that they can even help the ministry won't even help the ministry. Okay. What do you do? You love them. You pray for them. And from nowhere, God begins to solve your problems. Man. Many times okay. where we don't even expect God to bless us, mm. suddenly God touches people's hearts to bless our lives. Amen. So where now is the problem? There's no problem. Right. He that has called us is faithful. He can command the reasons mm. even to send us mm. our needs. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. If you just join us, this is my story, his call, and with but me in the virtual studios today. Be on focus. There should be no rush, mm. no running. And never ever think that you are stronger and mightier than your papa or the man mm. that you are sitting under his feet. You say you are anointed, he's wiser than you. Mm. Mm. You are anointed. Mm. You can preach. You can pray. Listen, he's wiser than you. He's older, okay. matured, and wiser than you. So you can't mm. outwit him. You can't. So let us be patient. It takes time to grow. Okay. Christian growth is mm. like a plant growing. Gradually we grow. Gradually we grow. Gradually we grow. There's no haste. He that believes shall not make haste. Financial problems are there. Emotional problems are there. Marital problems are there. All these challenges are there. But the key to all these changing seasons of life is the revelation mm. of Jesus Christ. In you. Because he That's controls right. all right. seasons of life. That's right. That's right.
Jesus is the center. Mm. Jesus is the center. His word and his spirit, mm. the center of everything. It controls everything that we face in life. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. Thank you. And thank you again. This is coming from Melissa uh, uh, Thompson, if I'm pronouncing it right, say that you are really a man of God. We cherish you, Daddy. God bless you. And Estina, and Estina Misa said that we are blessed to have you, God servant Rev. Elizabeth uh, Kwonko said that, man, faithful is he who has called us. I love the part. Keep sending in your comment. Let us know where you are watching us from. Daddy, we want to say thank you and thank you and thank you. In fact, if you didn't hear anything at all, don't forget, ministry is a person. Ministry is Jesus Christ. The revelation of who he is to you has a bearing on how you go about with your ministry activities. This is so deep. I'm telling you, this is really, 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 really deep. Now, Daddy, your final words to up and coming ministers, your final words, your final words to us. Thank you very much once again, Apostle Eric uh, Obey. Thank you very much for what you are doing. We believe in you. For events, for we begin to also pray with you, intercede, you know, uh, for you, for the good work that you are doing. I like what you stand for, the word and the spirit. Very important. Mm. Powerful platform. That's all what it is. Mm. Well, I want to conclude by saying that if I, I were to start again, all over again, mm. by one, Jesus. I will still focus on my family. Wow. Focus mm. on my family. If you don't have a family, don't have a ministry. Wow. I will make Jesus my priority more and more. more, and, more. and I will fully focus on my new creation status. Mm. more than titles people call me bishop people call me this people call me that somebody even told me one time that they will catch me by force and make me a bishop there's nothing wrong with that I like it I respect mm. that but it is work it's not title okay. it is work okay. 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 I will fully focus on my new creating status as a child of God. Mm. Okay. I will fully offer the members of mine. I will fully offer my members as instruments of righteousness. Mm. That God will give me the grace to continue to offer the members of my body as instruments of righteousness. Wow. I will fully surrender to God on a daily basis. Mm. And stay dependent on God. And make all other things around me fade into insignificance. If they don't glorify God. If they don't glorify God to me, it is to be counted as dunk. Wow. I cannot merchandise mm. Jesus for filthy lacquer, vain glory. Mm. What for? What is life? Mm. What is life? Time is short. Mm. And time waits for no one. Mm. Time waits for no one. The better we get ourselves in line with Jesus, the better. Amen. I'm afraid that Jesus will not tell me at my place of exit of the earth that I do not know you. Then I will say to him, ah, 
Don't you remember me? Yes. I healed the sick. I did miracles. Mm -hmm. I was prophet one. I was this, I was that. I was this in the kingdom. And Jesus telling me, yes, you did those things. I never knew you. Mercy. What was, Mercy. What was I doing? What was I doing? Hmm. That Jesus is telling me he never knew me. What yes. was I doing? Oh, Jesus. It means that we can deceive people. We can deceive God. And I'm afraid of that. I'm afraid of that. Because the very message that I heard that made me to change my mind was the message of hell. When the Holy Spirit literally revealed to my eyesight what hell is. Not what we read from the Bible, but what he showed my heart. The picture of hell. made me change my mind. As I conclude, Christianity, it takes the spirit of God in man to reveal Jesus and his redemptive word and to trust him regardless of what, knowing very well that one day I have an appointment with God to exit mm. the earth. Amen. One day, should Jesus tarry, mm. I have an appointment with God to mm. exit the earth. Mm. Mm. So I better be careful. Amen. God bless you. Thank you very much. And thank you for wow. all the listeners and the audience and i give god praise for giving me grace and mercy to come to your global you know uh platform to share uh, some few thoughts about my life and uh what god has been doing in my life and i it's a pray that the spirit of god will convict all hearers to shipping and to shopping people those who do not know Jesus to repent, those who are working as religious people, not having any relationship with Jesus, will rethink and know mm. that it's not going to check that matters. It is having an encounter with the person, Jesus Christ. And ministry is a person. Wow. Wow. And that person is Jesus wow. Christ. Thank you very much. I love you. Wow. Thank you and thank you and thank you and thank you again. Reverend, I hope you can see what is projected on your screen. I did not type it. A faithful listener said, Apostle Eric, obeying we need part two. I'm not saying it. This is coming from the family. So we have to put things together and invite you again as the Lord permits us. And as our customers, we always type in part two. And I think he has already gone ahead of us. And this is a humble request from one of us who wants to hear you again and again and again and again. This is spirit field. I have been blessed. Again, I'm re-echoing the message of Kenneth Hagen to Reverend Daniel was serve the Lord with gladness. Then it says moved by the word and spirit. That is exactly what Papa Hagan said to Reverend Daniel when he went to visit him. To me, it's like I'm hearing it for the first time today. It's like Papa Hagan speaking to me now, 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 now that need to serve the Lord with gladness and be moved by the word and spirit. Having a reflection of who Christ is, is the answer to it all. 
when I asked the Reverend, what is ministry? He said, ministry is, is, is about the person Jesus. So I, for a minute, I said, what is this? Now he had explained it to us, and it really makes sense. There is no way you can do proper ministry without a revelation of who Christ is. You cannot. Because you did not die for anybody. It is Christ who died for us all. So as you project Christ, that is the work of the ministry. Reverend Daniel, I want to say thank you and thank you again. And I want to acknowledge Reverend Barbara Osai. Reverend, thank you and thank you so much for joining us. A dynamic prophetess, apostle, Barbara Osai, all the way in the United States of America, Woodbridge. Apostle, thank you for joining us. There are so many people watching us today. Reverend. We will put things together and bring you back again for part two. Now, another message from the YouTube. I think now, now the YouTube YouTube people are joining us. It says, Patrick, uh, uh, this Briali is also requesting for part two. So, <laughs> Daddy, I'm not requesting for it. Now we have to hear the voice of the people. In fact, they want you to promise them you come back again. So say something to them. Are you coming back for the part two? As long as the Lord gives us grace, we are there for Jesus. Amen. You heard it. Amen. So Reverend is coming back again for the part two. We have to put it together and bring out the flyer. And I want to thank everybody so much for being part of this broadcast. Without you, we couldn't have had this. Look at the comments. Look at the people watching us. Thank you. And thank you again. Reverend, please pray for us. Hallelujah. Father, in your presence, we stand. Thank you for grace and mercy to communicate Jesus to people. Spirit of God, please take these words to the hearts of your people. Bring meaning and understand them to everyone. Heal the sick. Amen. Heal the broken-hearted ones. Amen. Jesus. Let a miracle accompany your word mm. for them to know that Jesus is still alive. Mm. I bless you and I thank you for this global platform you have set. Protect yourself and the family. Guard them. Them Amen. and sponsor them Amen. in Jesus' mighty name. I declare it done. Amen. 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 Thank you and thank you and thank you again. Daddy, God bless you. We can thank you now. So, family, thank you. We'll put things together. Pay your request or bring Reverend Daniel again for part two we need more of these fathers who have seen it all done it all there's much for us to learn from him one of the things that he said was that he cultivates a habit of asking questions wherever he goes he went to a papa hagan kenneth hagan he asked him questions and i believe that has transformed his life till osborne he asked questions all the fathers of the land he always asked questions and I think that has shaped him into what we are seeing today. And it's also pouring onto us. Thank you, and thank you, and thank you again. So bye-bye for now, Reverend. We will call, I will, I will get back to you. Then we'll put things together according to your time when you'll be available for us to have a part two. So until we meet again, I'm your host, God's servant, Eric Cobain. And I want to thank my producer, my external producer, Sir Jet. Uh, you, you are such a lovely person putting things together, uh, we making sure that I get Daddy on board. I want to say thank you and thank you. I want to thank the whole church, the entire church for supporting Daddy. Wherever you see the shepherd, we should see the sheep around. And you've been here mightily to us to support Daddy. I want to say thank you and thank you. So we're looking forward for the part two. We want to see more of you. Until meet again, it's bye-bye. This is my story. His call. We do this every Saturday. And we have another broadcast in the next hour and a half. 
God bless you. Bye for now. What have you been through? What have you survived? My story, his call with God's servant, Eric Obeng is a program designed to encourage servants of God in the ministry. Guests tell their life experiences from childhood to the point where God called them into the ministry, the challenges and oppositions they face. Ministry is not for lazy people. I wanted to be a medical doctor. And I'm glad my mom didn't abort me. Huh? But in all of it, we're more than conquerors. <laughs> I felt, um, I felt this, this if, I, if I quit it, I didn't know how I was really gonna survive and how far the Lord by His grace has brought them. There's a difference between church and being born again. So if God didn't send you there, you sent yourself, and then you're going to have a hell of a time, you know, being in that ministry. Mistakes are made, and then how you choose your leadership. You really, really take your time and pray and be very convinced. Praying for them to be healed, and God worked miracles. Mm. The enemy is smart, and I always say that he will get you at your most vulnerable. Mm. It takes the power of God. My Story, His Call is broadcast live on Facebook, YouTube, and the Word and Spirit Network Radio with your host, God's servant, Eric Obeng. Follow and subscribe for life-changing encounters. This is time that we want to be encouraged. This is time that we want to have fellowship in the law my story 